In this demonstration, we're going to show how you can configure a powertrain model for hardware in the loop testing with Simscape Driveline. We have a model of a vehicle powertrain. We are satisfied with the results we get from desktop simulation with a variable step solver. We now need to configure this model so that it can be used for hardware in the loop testing. However, portions of our model are numerically stiff. We're going to need to use the Simscape local solver to make this model real-time capable and so that we can test it with runtime parameters. Here are the steps that we'll go through. First, we will configure our model to use a fixed step, fixed cost solver appropriate for hardware in the loop testing. We will then rerun the model with that solver to verify that we still get the same results from our reference test. Next, we will generate C code from the model. After we have created that C code, we will download it to the real-time hardware. We will rerun the simulation and verify that we get the same results we got on our desktop computer. Finally, we will do our test. We will vary a parameter in the Simscape driveline network and, ver and see how the control system reacts. I will now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. Here is our model of a dual clutch transmission. When we go into this subsystem, you can see the two clutches that act in parallel to control the changing of the gears. These are connected via two mechanical connections to the rest of the transmission, where we can see the gears, the dog clutches, including the reverse gear. These dog clutches are used to pre-select the next gear to which the transmission will change. This is connected to our model of the longitudinal vehicle dynamics, where we have the final drive ratio, inertia, and aerodynamic drag. These systems are connected to our control system, where we have a state machine that controls the selection of the gears. When we run this simulation, you can see how it performs on a full throttle test. This scope shows the speed of the vehicle as we accelerate for 15 seconds. We also have a plot of the engine speed. Here you can see the transmission is changing gears. We are happy with how this model performs on desktop simulation. We would now like to configure this model for real-time testing. To do that, we'll use this MATLAB script to walk through the steps. The first step is to generate a set of reference results using a variable step solver on the desktop. We are using solver ODE23T, so we will rerun the simulation, and at the conclusion of the simulation we will save these results onto a MATLAB plot. So here is our MATLAB plot showing the reference results. We will now use these commands to configure the simulation to use a fixed step, fixed cost solver. Here you can see that we are using global solver ODE1. And here you can see that we have enabled the Simscape local solver. So we are using the local solver, backward Euler integrator, with this step size, and we have used fixed cost simulation. This means we are limiting the amount of computation per time step, which will help us avoid overruns on the real-time system. We will take these results and add them to the plot. And when we look closely, we can see that the simulation results match quite well. So we can see that we have selected real-time settings that allow us to have accurate results and we can tell that it runs quite, quite quickly. Now we will figure out which parameters we would like to tune on the real-time system. Using these MATLAB commands we will switch to the inertia and this is, represents the inertia of the vehicle. So we are going to set this to be a runtime parameter meaning that we can change its value on the real-time hardware without regenerating the C code. This will accelerate tests such as hardware in the loop testing where we will be running this model with the embedded hardware and software. We can modify the behavior of the physical system and verify how the control system reacts. So now that we have enabled our real-time param runtime parameters, those that we wish to change on the real-time hardware, we will use Simulink Coder to convert this model to C code and download it to the real-time hardware. Here you can see the real-time hardware, which we are using. It's running Simulink real-time, and it's connected to a monitor where we will be able to monitor the behavior of the simulation on the real-time target. We'll also be running in external mode, so we'll be able to see the simulation results on a Simulink scope. Switching over to the MATLAB window, we can see all of the messages that are being generated as the C code is produced. And now we can see the model is downloaded to the real-time target. We will switch to external mode so we can monitor the behavior of the simulation on the Simulink scope, connect to the target, and run the simulation. At the conclusion of this 15 second test, we'll upload the results. You can see both the vehicle speed and the speed of the engine on the two plots that are shown on the scope. 
and you can see those results being updated on the Simulink scopes as well. So we have reached the conclusion of our 15 second test on the real-time hardware. We will upload those results and add them to our plot and we can see that the results on the real-time system exactly match what we had on the desktop. We also saw that we didn't have an overrun which means our model is running fast enough. Now we're going to change that block parameter. We're going to change the inertia of the vehicle from 1600 kilograms to 1800 kilograms and then we will rerun the simulation with this new configuration for our physical model of the physical system and see how the control system reacts. We're not using external mode so you can monitor the results on the monitor that's connected to our real-time hardware. The simulation is now complete. We will upload those results and add them to our plot and if we zoom out we can see that the behavior has in fact changed. We can see that increasing the weight of the vehicle means that it accelerates more slowly, so it doesn't reach the same maximum speed at the end of 15 seconds. In this demonstration, we have shown how to configure Simscape driveline models for hardware-in-the-loop testing.